Okay, good morning. Thank you for being here. Um, joining us this morning is Holya from um, Walter B. Jacobs Nature Park. And today she's going to tell us all about crawfish. And we are having some sound difficulties with the uh, video. So um, she will just explain the video as it plays along. So without further ado, I will pass it on. Okay, here we go. Hello, my name is Julio Nell and I'm a naturalist at Walker B. Jacobs Memorial Nature Park, which is one of the Recreation Parks. Welcome to Cool Bugs program. Today, we're going to talk about crawfish or crayfish or crawdad or mud bug. This is a creature with many names. There are over 500 species of crawfish all over the world. 70% of them lives in Louisiana. But uh, today we're going to talk about the most common ones we have in Louisiana, which would be the swamp crawfish, which is red, and white crawfish. The swamp crawfish, the red one, lives in swamps, beaches, and a small body of waters. But the white one lives in bigger body of waters, like rivers and big lakes. Before we start talking about the crawfish we have in Louisiana, let's talk about uh, their classification first. Where do they belong in animal kingdom? Well, they belong to phylum arthropod, which means jointed legs. Arthro means joint, pod means leg or foot. So they're in the same phylum with insects, arachnids, and myriopod. They belong to the class crustacean and order decapod. Deca means 10 in Greek and pod means leg or foot. So they have 10 legs. Let's see. Here is my crawfish. We got this from one of our, one of the bayous in our park. So it is red. This is the swamp crawfish. And look at its 10 legs, five on each side. Let's count one, two, three, four, and five. These two front ones have developed keelies, bigger pincers, but each leg has a tiny pincer at the end. See, it can grab. They can grab with every little leg because each of them has a small pincer at the end. And the good thing is, when they lose a limb, it will grow back every time they molt. It will grow a little bit bigger. So when you see a big and a small pincer, it means most probably it has lost one of its pincers. And for some period, one of them will be smaller than the other one. Let's talk about the anatomy. Head and thorax fused together to make up the cephalothorax, and it has segmented abdomen. And here is the tail. The middle flap is called falcon. Hairs on the side are called uropods. It has a point to part in front of the head. It's called a rostrum. And it has some compound stalk eyes. It has two very long antennae and a pair of smaller antennae here. These are the appendages. These two are the appendages that they put the food into their mouth right there. This is the swamp crawfish. It's holding a, a fish food, a little bowl. Those are the appendages in the front that he's holding the food with. And it's moving the food towards his mouth and it takes little bites out of it. You can see how it is eating. And they also have compound eye stalks. They have very good eyesight. You can see in this video, 
the stalk of the eye, if you look at the eyes, see how they are protruding forward? You can see the eye stalks very clearly here. See how it's protruding forward? They can move the eyes uh, uh, independently from each other. And they can grab the picture pictures. <laughs> they grab food with those two. When we want to compare the two species, the swamp crawfish is red and it has bulky sensors. The uh, white crawfish is smaller and it has very slender pincers. That's the main difference between the two the color and the size of the pincers. That's the rostrum. That's the point part. This is the uh, cephalothorax of the, uh, of the one that we have with us. The eye stalks, you can see where they are. Head and thorax fused together to form the cephalothorax as one piece. As you see, the exoskeleton is very thin, but it's very tough. It doesn't crumble easily. This is the crawfish uh, uh, anatomy. How do we tell a male from a female? Pay attention to the features in the circles in both of them. The one on the left is male. This is a, this one that we have is a female because if it were a male, there would be two long claspers right there. And they would look like two hockey sticks. It doesn't have any of those here, as you see. And here are the receptacles of the female. A female crawfish can lay up to 200 eggs. She lay eggs typically in the burrow and they are fertilized in the burrow and the eggs become attached to the swimmerettes under, at the underside of the female and she curls her tail uh, like a scoop to keep them there. The eggs will hatch in two to three weeks according to the temperature and they will stay with mom for about, again, two to three weeks. And as soon as they come out of the egg, they look just like an adult, only they are very tiny. They keep molting. Crawfish are dead rewards. They eat rotting plants, leaves, and other organisms. They also feed on snails, insects, larvae, worms, and uh, insects. Here, uh, I'm feeding the uh, one that we have in our aquarium that we got from our uh, bayou in the park. As you see, he grabs it with his large pincers in the front and he kind of touches them with the little ones on his back legs. They can live up to 20 years. They have a long lifespan. Okay, let's talk about crayfish dish. It doesn't matter what color the crawfish is when it is alive, they all turn red when cooked. There's a reason for that. A crustacean's exoskeleton contains several proteins called pigments. The orange pigment is called estrazentin. In those crawfish that are not red, estrazentin is not visible because it is wrapped tightly with another pigment protein called crustocyanin. When cooked, this crustocyanin protein, which is wrapped around estesantin, is destroyed. So it, it disappears and it lets the estesantin free and thus it becomes visible. That's how the shell turns red. This estesantin also uh, gives the salmon 
it's red color too. They take this pigment with their food. Same thing goes both for lobsters and crabs. Christensen and is a pigment that gives some crawfish their blue color. Crustocyanin is the one that gives blue color. There it is. That's a blue crayfish that they have just found. This is from West Virginia. It is very rare. This is a new species. It's a subterranean, like most of them. It goes eight feet under the ground and it comes to the surface to these little pools to search for food. But of course, they have gills, they can breathe in the air, but they have to stay, their gills have to stay moist. They can breathe both outside the uh, water and in the water. It has been officially classified as a new discovery and they are going to be named. So this crayfish has crustocyan invisible on its uh, exoskeleton. Okay, let's talk about the chimney of the chimney crawfish that we have in Louisiana. Here is a chimney of a crawfish. So you can see these chimneys in your uh, lawn. The tunnels underneath the chimneys are normally full of water. So why do they make chimneys? Well, basically the crawfish's purpose is not to build a chimney, but to submerge the, into the water beneath the water table. So while they're making a tunnel, they have to carry the mud out. Every time they grab a pa pallet of mud, it cannot go and walk across the lawn to put it somewhere away from the hole. So it just keeps accumulating around the hole on top of each other. So they, so they won't have to travel far away from the hole because then it's too dangerous. They become vulnerable to the predators. So they just stack them up on top of each other, right at the edge of the entrance of the tunnel. They are smeared with mud while they're digging and carrying this uh, tunnel. That's why they're called mud bugs. There's only one crawfish per chimney or per tunnel. I would like to talk about some myth that surrounds the, the crawfish dish. According to the information from LSU Ag Center, LSU Agriculture Center, there are some facts to the myths. The first one is the first myth about crawfish is people think it is high in cholesterol. According to the LSU Ag Center, it's not. It's actually low in fat trans saturated fat and trans fat. The bright yellow to orange fat that, that is squeezed out from the head of the crawfish is not in fact a fat. In fact, it's an organ called hypotopancreas, which is kind of like the liver of the other animals. Another myth about crawfish dish is that it's not good for your heart. People with heart problems should not eat crawfish. Well, that's not correct either because of the same reason. They are low in fat, trans fat, and saturated fat. Furthermore, they are high in proteins and minerals. So it's good for you and not bad for the heart. In fact, shrimp, fish, potatoes. There are some rules as to how to cook crawfish. 
the internal temperature must reach up to 145 degrees and it should turn red. When it turns red, it means it's done. If you cook too many of them, and if there are leftovers, you can keep the leftovers in the refrigerator up to three days or keep them frozen for three months. Normally, crawfish, potatoes, corn, and onions that we cook it with are low in sodium. But when people put too much salt into the boiling water, then too much salt sodium is not healthy for anyone because of the because it it retention of the water uh, because it retains water so you can cook your crawfish with no salt and it will be very healthy just crawfish potato onion corn no salt lsu egg center also recommends for those who have eaten too much crawfish <laughs> salty crawfish should eat fruits and vegetables that are high in potassium that will blunt the effects of sodium. Crawfish are excellent source of high quality protein and low in calories and fats, trans fat, saturated fat, and they're also a good source for vitamin B12, iron, copper, and selenium. So this would be all for our crawfish program. I hope you found it useful. Thank you for listening and see you next time. Did you have a, a PowerPoint to share or is it um, just the video? It looks like you're muted. I'm gonna see the questions now, right? Hold on one second, please. Yes, okay. Here we go. Does anybody have any questions? And you feel free to unmute yourself if you have any. Yes, if you have a question, unmute yourself. Can you hear me, Lauren? I can hear you, yes. Okay, okay. Okay, well, um, I I'm have a question. I have a question. I usually ask this at the other ones. Um, what do the what do crawfish do for our ecosystem? What's their benefit? The crawfish, the most their their most important uh, role is they are detrivores, which means they uh, make the bigger uh, dead uh, organisms smaller. They eat. Uh, they are a good part. They are an important part of a life cycle, uh, and uh, decomposing of the nutrients. And uh, they're also a very good food source for uh, the food chain, for the food web. The anything and everything that lives in, on, over, above, water, uh, hunt crawfish, including humans, of course. Nick, do you just find them mostly in the in the south? No, they're uh, they all the way up to Michigan. In fact, uh, I didn't mention in my program uh, because I wanted to talk about Louisiana, but up in Michigan in the Great Lakes area, uh, this our swamp crawfish has transported there somehow, most probably with the fishermen, uh, you know, that carried them as bait or for food. And then they let uh, some of them for free and it has become an invasive species up north. And that blue crawfish that we saw uh, in the, that was from West Virginia, uh, that program was made in West Virginia. So uh, crawfish are all over the United States. In fact, 70% of the crawfish of the world lives in Louisiana, uh, not in Louisiana, but lives in uh, 
in the United States of America, but of course, majority is in the South because of the climate. I think Jenny has a question. Jenny, I'm with your, yes? My name is Isabella. I'm just on my mom's iPad. Speak yes. Loud. My name is Isabella, but I'm just on my mom's iPad. Okay, but, so um, your, your name is Isabel, sorry. <laughs> um, so what happens if you kick down their homes and then they don't, then they can't The leave? chimney, you mean the chimney, you kick the chimney and nothing happens because, because some people claim the chimney has something to do with the airflow into the, into the hole, but for my personal uh, belief as a biologist is chimney doesn't have any function. It just is there because uh, the animal doesn't want to walk away from the hole and become vulnerable to the predators. So every time it picks up a little uh, paddle of uh, mud to dig the tunnel, just comes out and puts it there. It is time, energy, and safety reasons it, it is there. But and the, when it rains, for example, too hard, it is mud. It melts away. Uh, it doesn't hurt the it doesn't hurt the uh, uh, crawfish in the tunnel. The only even if it is clogged up, the tunnel is clogged up. It won't hurt the uh, crawfish because they're going to climb up. And when the air is getting oxygen is getting less, <laughs> they're going to climb up and open the hole. That's what they do. So uh, it is okay if the <laughs> crawfish chimney is uh, by mistake kicked or melted down but uh, you have to be careful if it is in your lawn you can see them in your lawn uh, but uh, it can hurt your lawnmower because they are hard they become very hard uh, uh, soils you know almost like a rock thank you for asking you. this very considerate pro uh, problem seeming problem <laughs> thank you a great question because I have those all over my yard so I wondered about that also <laughs> yeah it's not going to hurt anyone but uh, it might hurt your lawnmower and if the crawfish happens to be putting one more paddle up the tower <laughs> if you crash the crawfish uh, there will be one less crawfish But they're at the bottom of the food chain. When, uh, when creatures are at the bottom of the food chain, it means there are a lot of them there. <laughs> Any other questions? You know, I would like to make, uh, give some more explanation. I said they molt uh, their exoskeleton, just like insects. Uh, everybody in this arthropod uh, phylum, uh, shed their, uh, molt their exoskeleton. The reason for that is the insects grow, as they grow, their exoskeleton stays the same side. So when, when the skeleton is becoming too crowded, they come out of it and new shell already is um, uh, forming underneath. And there's a, uh, there's a vulnerable period after they molt because they're a little bit soft. Their shell hardens in a few, maybe an hour or so minute. It, it, it goes for all um, insects and crustaceans, all animals that shed their exoskeleton. That vulnerable period is the period when they are get caught by the predators easily. Any other questions? The important thing about, uh, I hope everybody heard the part uh, about the dish, a crawfish boil. It has to be, uh, it doesn't matter if the tail is curled after, the, after cooking or not. It doesn't mean it died before cooking, uh, but it could be because of the crowd. It couldn't curl up its uh, abdomen, but uh, the important thing is they should have turned red and uh, the internal temperature should reach up to 145 degrees. Uh, then it will be cooked. And about salt, salt, sodium is not good for any dish. If you don't put too much salt in your boil, crawfish boil will be a very healthy food because it's a source of vitamins, minerals, and high quality protein. 
So our go crawfish boil. <laughs> I can't hear you, Lauren. But I've yet to have any crawfish this season, so now I need to go get some. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anything else? Any, any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you so much for presenting for us this morning. And uh, thank you. You're very welcome. And everyone who attended, thank you. I hope you learned something. I did. Okay, was well, there anything else you'd like to share with us before we leave? Uh, no, thank you for listening and uh, sorry for these technical issues, but uh, we managed to do the program despite the power, cut <laughs> power shortage and uh, some sound issues, uh, but I hope it went well. On your it side worked too. out great, yes. Okay. Okay, well, thank great. you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, see you soon at the park. Bye. 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 Thank you. Oh, any idea when the park will You're open back welcome. up? Uh, we are uh, we are getting ready. Uh, most probably in June, we are going to start some of our live programs. Uh, we are we have been demanding, and we are waiting to hear from our upper management. But uh, we will have some uh, programs starting in June again with all the precautions, of course, and it will be mostly outdoors programs. We are working on it, and we're waiting to hear the decisions of the. Uh, higher level uh, management the commission yes ma'am yes okay. thank you we miss you guys we missed to see you guys in our park yes ma'am we All miss right. coming great <laughs>